Hi, I'm Francesca and this is Law of Attraction Changed My Life. So we're only 12 days into the new year and this is statistically the day when people will fall off the wagon and completely give up their New Year's resolutions. So I don't know if you're a member of our group yet, just go to Facebook and search Law of Attraction Changed My Life group. It's a fantastic group, there's about 20,000 of us over there, 21,000 now. And one of the most pro prolific members is a guy called Nick Bro, who is an author and he is just a Law of Attraction expert. And he made this little post on New Year's Day and so I thought I'd just read it to you real quick. Do or do not, there is no try. Getting what you want out of 2018 is about one thing, winning the battle between who you are and who you want to be. Are you going to mimic, mirror, continue to re-experience life in the same way, from the same vibration that you did in 2017? Are you going to allow your inner critic to make its perceived safety and comfort a priority over you and your inner being's dreams and desires? That person you envision becoming at the end of this year, the one who has all of the things that you want, how do they feel? What's their perspectives? What's their level of commitment? to themselves and to those around them. Embody is one of my three key words for 2018. Even if your physical reality and circumstances don't yet reflect that version of you right here, right now, start embodying that version of you today. Feel and embrace that future version of you. Embody the way that they act, the way that they feel and think. Don't work on becoming him or her be him or her. Through your words, your actions, through the way that you think and the way that you feel. So like many other Law of Attraction people, we fucking love New Year's, right? Because it's all about a fresh start, a new beginning and setting goals for the year ahead. But I must admit, I am like the majority of the population where I make New Year's resolutions and I make New Year's goals and I don't ever really seem to actually achieve them. Um, so I was listening to a video by Tony Robbins the other day, and I don't listen to a whole whole bunch of Tony Robbins really, um, but I just came across this video about New Year's resolutions and I knew that I wanted to do a video on this today and I thought, okay, let me have a little listen. Well, what I found out changed my life. So what Tony was saying is that often when people make a New Year's resolution, it's either a negative or something that is not very exciting. So for example, you could say, I want to lose weight or I want to eat less sugar. So everyone knows if you say you want to do less of something, you're still mentioning the sugar. So it's kind of like a double negative. You're going to end up eating more sugar because the focus is just on the word sugar. That's all your body hears. Um, and losing weight is just such a, a boring, um, non-valued, non-measured uh, commitment that you, you're just bound to fail. By day 12, you are bound to fail. So the first thing he said to do is to make your news resolution exciting, make it full of passion, make it something that is going to make you see it through 12 months of the year. So if you want to say, I want to lose weight, <sighs> really? I don't give a shit. If you change that to something like, by the end of this year, I want to join a local cycling team and compete in a triathlon. Like, how much more exciting is that? Or I want to join my local women's football team or just something I like can compete in a tournament or become a professional, I don't know, whatever. You need to make it something so exciting or complete your first marathon. Like imagine you just crossing that finish line doing a fucking marathon, like how hard is that? That is so much more inspirational and so much more motivational than simply I want to lose weight. Um, one that Tony Robbins didn't mention, but I'm just going to chuck in here because it's my fucking channel, I'll do what I like, is I think you really should just stick to one New Year's resolution. Um, we mostly fail on them anyway, right? So what's the point in making three or four? Um, I think making one goal and just sticking to that one thing, fantastic. If you complete it and you find that you're, they say it takes 28 days to make a habit, right? So say you're like a month in or two months in and like, do you know what, I fucking got this then there's nothing to stop you setting a new goal in March. Like, you, you don't have to wait for January to set a new goal for yourself. I would honestly just focus on one thing. So something Tony said that really struck with me is that everything that we are today is a result of the rituals that we have in our lives. The way that my body is, the way that my mind is, the way that my home is, the way that my life is set up is all a result of the rituals that I do every single day. Not just me, you too. 
And so he gives this amazing four step action plan to actually set a new resolution, stick to it and fucking achieve it. So here's step one. Select an area of your life that you'd like to improve right now and be really, really honest with yourself what it's currently like. So for me, I picked diet because my well, diet's fucking appalling. Step two, write down the rituals that have shaped your current condition in this area and be really, really honest about what it is that has got you to this point. Write down what you want and make your vision compelling. And also remember to be specific. So like we said before, don't let it be some vague, wishy-washy, boring as fuck resolution. Like I want to lose weight or I want to be healthier. No, I want to run a marathon by the time the London Marathon rolls around. I don't know what month of the year that is because I do not do marathons. But something like that, make it something that you're like, oh, that scares me. Is that even possible? Like I'm scared, but it's going to be a challenge. And step four, this is the step that really, really got me and made me realize, oh, so this is how you achieve a goal. Thanks, Tony. Write down the rituals that will get you to your compelling vision. What would you need to do differently every day to get what you want? So let me just tell you, um, my New Year's resolution is to change my diet and to be healthy. And so I wrote down my notes here, got some notes. Um, because I was like, do you know what, if I'm telling you guys this, I really should do it myself. And so my thing to change is my diet. And I know that may not sound like um, a compelling vision. And so my compelling vision for me is that I want to go on vacation this year, somewhere amazing and hot, and be literally like a size 10 in a bikini looking fucking amazing, and to also be a really accomplished cook. So this may sound like really is, is such a big deal but you have no idea how bad my diet is like I should be on one of those fucking secret eater shows when I go to London to work which is like two days a week I legit have McDonald's delivered to my bed for breakfast I have KFC or Nando's for lunch and I have like a Domino's pizza or Indian for dinner I eat takeaway three times a day I would say I probably eat takeaway on average twice a day or eat out twice a day and it is fucking ridiculous not only is it terrible for my health um but also for my fucking bank balance like it's so expensive um each meal because in london i get things delivered to my flat each one is like approximately 12 13 pounds per meal so that's a lot of money that i'm spending on food um not only that but in the last sort of two months i've had some really bad health problems um I'm fucking 33, I, I can't keep this shit up, I've got, I've got to sort my life out, and I think especially having a baby, number one, I have to cook healthily for her, so it may, like, I'll do something healthy for her, and then I'll eat like shit, and it's like, well, why do I care about her health, but not my own, um, I don't want her to be like a motherless orphan, um, and also, like I said, like, I have had some really bad health problems recently, like, should do with, like, gastric things, and so, I think, it takes your health being gone for you to realise, like, fuck, I need to look after this body. It's the only one I have. So when I'm saying to you, like, I'm making a real effort to go food shopping and cook, it's not a small thing for me. It's a huge thing. I grew up with massive eating disorders. Believe it or not, I was three stone for years. Like, oh, what I wouldn't give for that now. Um, but I have a lot of food phobias. I have a lot of things I don't eat. And the whole process of cooking freaks me out. So for me to go food shopping and cook at home is a really, really big deal. That's just a caveat. I want you to know. I want you to know that when bearing this in mind. So that's my compelling vision is that I'm on this holiday um, and I'm a size 10. And you know, just that feeling. And it's not even just a holiday. It's just the summer in general. I just want to feel fantastic and at my very, very best. So number two is what are the rituals that have got you here? Let's be honest. Let's be real. Uh, so eating takeaway, 100% of my meals in London. And probably, let's be real, 50% of my meals here. Uh, making excuses to eat takeaway. So what I'll do is like, my day will be planned out and say I'll go over to my mum's and I'll be like, oh, we haven't had any lunch, so we'll have to get KFC on the way. Like, that I'll make an excuse about it like that, whereas really what I should just do is just eat before I go, but anyway. Um, but it's really helpful. I've never really realised that these things, I've never written them down before. So writing these down actually made such a difference. Um, not doing a weekly food shop. I don't do that. I hardly have a food shop. Um, the big one for me was I've never done a meal plan. 
So I literally wrote out um, a bunch of meals that I can make. Um, and then I actually got a little notepad that says Monday to Friday on it. And I wrote on each day what I'm going to cook that day. And then I last night I was like, right, well, I need to go food shopping then. So I went out food shopping and for the first time ever, I actually bought all of the items that I needed to make all of these meals over the next six days. So this is six days worth of food for me and Bohemia. And I've got loads of snacking fruit and stuff as well. And it came to 56 pounds. So I would have normally have spent that in a day and a half on takeaway. So already saving myself money. Um, another thing I do is I eat meals in my car um, and I equate it to a reward or a treat. And I think that is like the really big thing for me is I treat food as like a reward or a like, oh, you've done well today, Fran. Like you've gone to work for three hours or oh, the baby was teething today. She's very challenging. You deserve a KFC. And let's be real, it's not a treat. It's not treating my body, it's, it's harming me. So step three is, what is step three? Remind me. I'll write these down, down below so we don't have to keep trying to remember these. Write down what you want. Oh, sorry, yeah, write down what you want. What is your compelling vision? And my compelling vision was um, that I have a confidence-filled summer as a hot size 10. Um, I'd like to be 100% healthier too with my health problems gone and I also would like to be a better cook. So number four is what are the rituals you need to implement in your life in order to get you to this new point? Um, so I need to do a large weekly food shop. So I figured out which day of the week that is best to do. It's the day that I get back from London. I'm often a little bit like, oh, Bo, what should we do today? Because I've only got like half a day. Um, I'm going to do a big food shop for the next five days. And then I've got all of my food here in the house and there's no excuse. Um, do a few smaller shops throughout the week for like fresh fruit and veg and stuff that I need. Always have fruit and healthy treats to snack on. So I'm not tempted to like just go and buy a massive bar of chocolate. Write up a weekly meal plan. Like I said, this is the one that has been like an epiphany for me. I'm like, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to like just write a meal plan and know what I'm gonna eat. It makes it so much easier, seriously. Write a list of meals that I can make and plan my day um, to involve meals at home. So I'm actually gonna start planning my day better. Um, I've just started bullet journaling. Does anyone else do that? It's amazing. I'm gonna do a whole video on it. Um, and that has helped me plan my day to be like, okay, I know I'm gonna go out at two o'clock, which means that we need to eat lunch at home beforehand. Um, do seven minute workout once a day. I think if I say to myself I'm gonna do it once a day, realistically I'll do it once every other day, and I'm really happy with that. Drink more water and try one new recipe a month. So um, that's my little like fun thing in there is that I have a little handwritten recipe book and I'm gonna try and write, um, I'm have to correct myself because there is no try. You either do or you fucking don't. And I'm gonna do a new recipe once a month to like add to my repertoire of what I can cook. So January's recipe is a chicken and vegetable pie. I'll let you know how that goes. I'll probably put it on my Instagram, which is at Francesca Ramba. Um, and let me just show you the little things I have that help me along this journey. So I've got one of these notepads that are things to do, but it's just got Monday to, uh, through to Sunday, days of the week. And I usually use this for like um, things that I need to do each day. But I've just put, divided it up into lunch and dinner because breakfast is just always like cereal or porridge or whatever. Um, I'm pretty good on the old breakfast. It's just the other two that fuck me up. So I've just made, and you know, I've got some room. I've got some wiggle room. I'm not like, right, Nazi Germany, this is what we're doing. I've got some spaces where it's like, okay, if I want to have whatever on that day, then I can. But I'd say 70% of it is planned. And that has made such a huge difference to me. So what day is it today? Friday. Tonight, I am having beef stew. I also have one of these recipe books and I bought this years ago. It's got an old 1950s housewife on it and that's very much the um, frame of mind I was in at the time. I think I just met my husband and I was like, right, I'm gonna be the world's best cook. Um, and you can like hand write all of your little recipes in there, which I so prefer because you can buy a massive um, recipe book and like only like three things in it, do you know what I mean? So it's just a little bit um, pointless really. I hope this has helped you and I hope this hasn't been too rambly, um, but I really do feel like just following those four steps completely simplified and made it pretty much impossible to fail. 
So I will write the steps down below as well, like in the uh, description box so that it's easier to see as well. And I will see you next Friday for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.